Guten Tag. I'm here for another day at Eurobike in search of the hottest tech available to humanity. Um, I'm actually aboard the second most popular bike in all of Germany. All Germans ride this to work. Right, time to put on my Grosse Jungenhosen, that's German for big boy pants, and go find more tech. There's loads of stuff here, there's loads of new bikes as well, and um, yeah, all sorts. Right, Wiedersehen, tschüss. <laughs> Hashtag save the rim brake. It's alive and well here on the Cipollini stand. They've got their Dolomia Vellum uh, here, which is an incredibly light bike. This frame set, uh, including what well, frame and fork, is said to be less than a kilo. But on that, they've got this incredible build, which is, is well, it's the standard lightweight affair. So you've got lightweight Meilenstein Obermeyer wheels, um, Jura Ace full group set throughout, including the dual, dual pivot rim brakes, um, and a THM clavicular crank set, but this isn't any THM clavicular crank set. This is a, an SE special edition. Normally this is matte, but what they've done is they've got a clear coat lacquer on it to make it all glossy, which looks because it's there to match the frame, which is kind of a signature look for a lot of Cipollini bikes. They often um, have a nice thick coat of lacquer and then a cosmetic layer of carbon sort of wrapped over the top of the carbon frame just to give this beautiful carbon weave effect throughout the entire frame. It really does look absolutely exquisite. It's really smart and I like the gold logos that go with it. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think. I mean, this bike is, is decked out with all the, all the carbon tie chain rings. We've got this nice data uh, cockpit on there. But would you go for this or the disc brake one, which I'm told is about 6.4 kilos. So still UCI illegal, but it's got disc brakes. That's the one behind it there. Um, other thing I should point out is this does have tubulars on because they're lighter. It's, it's the Cipollini way. In this box is not a pregnancy test kit. Um, it's actually probably the most expensive tire levers money can buy. Check these out. These are from a company called Fusion Fiber and they're carbon fiber tire levers. These, this set costs $50, pretty expensive. Um, but there is some cool, cool tech here. So big problem with the bike industry is carbon fiber isn't really recyclable. It has quite a big environmental impact. These are made from recycled carbon fiber and the makers are claiming that they're the strongest tire levers you can buy, which is a pretty big claim. Um, what they're doing is they're taking off cuts and, and waste carbon fiber from other carbon fiber manufacturing processes like say for example frames or wheels and then they're heating it up to melt nylon in it to make that molten and then they're well sort of like heat compression molding it at so very high pressure and, and temperature into this uh, tire lever shape which they said results in an incredibly strong product but crucially it's recycled carbon and they're using tire levers as an example of what this technology could do but their plan isn't just to make tire levers their plan is to use this tech to build other things out of recycled carbon in the future so well let's watch this space this is a pilot titanium bike. Now there are many other pilot titanium bikes behind me, but they're not like this one because this one is 3D printed. Now it is, the entire frame is 3D printed titanium. It's made in three sections and that's because they don't currently have a 3D printer big enough to do it in one piece, but they could do it in one piece in theory. Now the exciting thing uh, about this is commercially available 3D printed bikes, I feel that they, they are the future because there's so many obvious advantages to this. Once the, the 3D printed machines get bigger and you can scale this up, it makes so much sense because, well, you can have more efficient use of the material, you can make more complicated shapes than using a normal round titanium tube, but also the time it takes to make this is much shorter. So they say that to print this entire frame takes just eight hours, which sounds like a lot of time, until you think how long it takes to make a carbon fiber frame from start to finish. So if you've seen our carbon fiber frame manufacturing videos in the past, it's hundreds of hours that goes into a carbon frame and a huge labor cost too. 
Speaking of which, the price of this bike is very expensive. Um, it's it's 17,000 euros in its complete build here. However, that's because at the moment it, it's, it's like a one-off. Scalability with more 3D printing machines, bigger machines, and when you start scaling up this manufacturing process, you can make the bikes far more cost-effective than, than a carbon bike because you're massively reducing that, that human labor cost and the number of hours it takes to make it. Furthermore, you can make it lighter because of that efficient use of material. So this frame is around 1.1 kilos at the moment, but they say that already the next iteration, which they're currently printing at the moment, they say, is, is, is around just a kilo. So a kilo for a titanium frame, incredibly light. And, well, this is just the beginning. You'd imagine it's going to get even lighter than that. So there's complex structures in here, and you can have sort of much more complex frame shapes. Um, and you can see this has got some wonderful frame shapes on it. It's called a siren, this model. But other advantages it, it include you can have customized geometry on a, on a 3D printed bike. And you can save on logistics costs because it could be printed in whatever country you are where you're based so you don't have to do import export it's just it, i am really excited about the future of 3d printing and even better than, well best of all potentially it's great for the polar bears because 3d printed titanium you can just melt it down and recycle it carbon fiber you know as we mentioned earlier with the tire levers big problem recycling carbon fiber and yeah it's uh I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I think 3D printed titanium bikes, I think, it's, I think the future's bright. But let us know what you think. Another neat little gadget on the Topeak stand, which has caught my eye, is this really, really smart little light. So it's USB rechargeable. It fits underneath your saddle. And it does that by way of a little bracket that's got a magnetic attachment on. You can see the magnet on the back of the light there. And then this with a 3M sticky pad sticks underneath your saddle. This is really useful because it means that you can have a light stuck under your saddle that then doesn't interfere and get in the way when you attach a saddle pack on. Often sticking a light on when you've got a saddle pack on can get in the way and stuff. But also, I see a really good use for this in time trials because in the UK, at least, we, ha we have to run a rear light. And well, you probably should do anyway, even if you don't have to for safety, uh, run a rear light on an open road. And this is just nice and neat and just tucked away under the saddle so it's plenty aero and uh, just a great little solution. So you can see if I just slot this in back here. Some seriously nice shoes here on DMT. Check these out. These are the KRSLs, but these aren't any ordinary ones. These are podgy special editions for Tade Pogaccia. He's going to be wearing these at the Tour de France. Um, they've got this cool custom heart rate graphic on the side with each peak in the heart rate um, actually signifying his victories. So we've got uh, the yellow one for the Tour, we've got the red one for the Vuelta, blue one for Torreno. I'm guessing the others are things like Liège. Anyway, uh, you can have a choice of, uh, well, Poggy can have a choice, or you, because they're limited edition, um, can have a choice of orange or white laces. But what I really like on them is they have like a white, the carbon sole, which is the same on the standard one, is painted white. So it creates this really unique look. It looks like a trainer or a sneaker, if you're American. It's, it's, it's not like a normal, you know, all these other shoes, you look at them, they have the black sole underneath, which makes them look like a cycling shoe, but that creates a real unique look. Really like those. Um, and only 208 grams per pair in a size 42. Proper light being lace-ups. But KR1 shoe, which we've worn in the past actually, is now available in a different colorway this year. So it's in full black if you want to go like that, or you've got the white one. And then now it's new color, mint. What do you think of that? Let us know in the comments. Mint. I thought it was glow in the dark. It's not glow in the dark, it's mint. I know what you're thinking. Gee, Ollie, you've got a whopper in your hands. This is a 62 tooth carbon chain ring from Carbon Tie, right? This has been used by UAE Team Emirates. I spotted them using these things at the Giro d'Italia. Uh, earlier in the year. Didn't get any footage of it, but look at that. Absolute monster dinner plate and, well, fully carbon, so light and, and stiff. Really cool. They've also got some new chain rings out, which are double chain rings. That's a single chain ring, so it's got a narrow wide tooth profile on it so that you don't drop your chain and you can run it without a front derailleur. 
But down here, we've got double chain sets designed for the four bolt Shimano pattern. And they've got these little covers that are designed to go on to make it flush with the Shimano crank set. And these are available in different sizes. So it's a carbon carrier and then an alloy um, exterior part for the teeth. So the teeth will last longer and won't be, you know, worn away. Uh, but they're available in much bigger sizes than what Shimano offers. So they're doing them, I can see the sizes over there, in a 58, 46, and then also a 56, 44 too. So, you know, the trend is for bigger rings, especially in time trials. It's really good to see that they're being catered for and, well, lightweight. But yeah, let us know what you think of this in the comments section. Well, that's it for another day here at Eurobike. Everyone's packing down now and going home. Uh, let us know in the comment section what your favorite thing has been so far. I'm going to go get myself a massive Grosser Schwarzwälder Kirschentorten now. Um, that's Black Forest Gatto. Um, mit, mit Nutella. Also. Right. Wiedersehen.